of Message to the People. You know, this is the course on African philosophy, and I'm very grateful that you're joining me today. Let's just jump right into it. So this is lesson three. This is about the aims and objectives of the UNIA. And this is obviously something you want to modernize, but it's something to also consider. I want you to understand this, actually. The UNIA is still active to this day. Okay, some people will say, oh, well, the UNIA faded away with Garvey. No, the UNIA is still active to this day. So if you if you want to join the community of, of people who who have this mentality that Garvey is expressing, and it might not necessarily be perfect, but this is it. Now, I want you to also understand that there's this book by the wonderful, uh, wonderful let's say, leader, Asada Shakur. And Asada Shakur, she talks about how she attended UNIA meetings and she saw people sitting around doing long-winded lectures and all that. And, I mean, that's kind of what you're going to see, too, if you if you go to the UNIA meetings today. But, you know, if you're not involved with anything, then that's, that's a perfect option to, to go about with. Now, I would invite you to join the Discord and and uh you know let, let's try to build from there but if you can't do that for some reason if you can't click on the link join the discord that's that's fine join the unia do something you know there's also afrocentricity international you can go check that out uh as well like just just it's like what malcolm x says and kwame Ture say which is just be in an organization like whatever you do you got to be in an organization, whatever organization it is. Now, I would advise you come to me, obviously, but otherwise, just join an organization. And look, if you join an organization and you carry with you good books, like you're doing me a favor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you got you got the, the book of power in your in your and whatever organization you are. I don't even care if you're like in the Democratic Party or whatever or the, or the freaking Republican Party. No, I'm joking. Don't do that. But but if you're in if you're wherever you are like wherever in this world you know BLF ELF uh, EFF uh, anywhere uh, like just do that you know and 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 just be in an organization. So here's the aims and objectives of the UNIA, and you know this is something to take and keep in mind when you in when you're in an organization. But also remember, you can also make an organization. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and of course, I'm following the advice of Kwame Ture right there. But let's go. One, to establish a universal confraternity among the race. Okay, so we mean by this that there must be a linking up of fraternal relationships with, with fraternal relationship with all the members of the Negro race to the exclusion of none. Okay? All of us. Every Negro in the world must be part of a confraternity. Right? Uh, all of us. All of us. Every Negro interest must come first in all things of humanity. Not until you have served every Negro in the world should you seek to be kind to others. Charity begins at home. So this is race first, you know, race first 101. The home of the Negro race is all over the world, okay? So it's not just in Africa. It's all over the world, right? You must attend to them first before you think of others. If you have a shilling or 25 cents to give away to charity, before you give it to other charities, see that all other Negro charities are first attended to. So long as there is need in your race, attend to it first and always. Never deny help to your own race. This is the meaning of confraternity. One for all and all for one. Never depart from this. So, you know, always give first to black folk. And that's that's what, that's like a way of, that's a way that I live too, you know. Uh, as soon as I have a dollar, you know, if I want to go get food outside, I mean, with some exceptions, obviously, but if I want to get food outside, I go to my, I go to my Jamaican spot. You know what I mean? I go to my Jamaican spot. I go to I go to the Haitian spot. I go to the Trinidadian spot. I go to uh, you know I go to the AA spot. I go to the African spot. I go I go I go. Not only where I know the food's gonna be good, but where I know that black folk gonna get money. You get what I'm saying? And and you know this is kind of the principle of buy black. You know something that you know I, I would say you attribute to, uh, or I was told you attribute to uh, Carlos A. Cooks. You know. But it's, and, and of course, if you want the Carl St. Cook's book, just join the Discord and say, I want the Carl St. Cook's book, and you got it. But, um, but, but, but that's also, 
like 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 just buying black and just doing for black people first and foremost you know that's really what we have to be about and 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 a lot of us don't do that uh but but we don't understand that that's what white folk do white folk always do for themselves first i'm not saying white folk don't do for others but it 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 comes down to the the predicament that is you know the white man's always going to do for the white people before he does for you you know if if he has to make a choice it's like what black folk know about our condition in the west is that we are the first fired and the last hired you know what i mean we're the first fired and the last hired and that's and that's pretty much what it is so it's a, so garfield's saying do the opposite you know first fire other people right or, or or first hire your people and last fire your people you understand but let's keep going two to promote to prompt the spirit of pride and love okay so it must be the mission of all negroes to have pride in their race to think of the race in the highest terms of human living to think that amon made the race perfect that there is no one better than you that you have all the elements of human perfection and as such you must love yourself so yeah i don't it's against my religion to use this word you know what i'm saying i, I don't like i don't like because this is that what zungu got you know i mean i know you say well you just said it uh <laughs> well i'm not i'm not the most clever person in the morning but you know it's against my i, I don't want to i don't want to use this word it's against my spirituality how about that to use this word it's, i feel like this is you know, taking from our ancestral legacy. So that's why I'm going to just read over it. I'm, I'm going to use Negro. I mean, I could even change it to African, right? But I might I might just change it to African. I don't even want to use this word, to be honest. But although this is not a bad word, this just means people of the Great River, not uh, the, the Great Niger, the people of the Great River Niger, okay? Now, of course, not every person in Africa is a um, person of, of, like, from the river of the Niger, of the Niger, of the Niger River. Uh, but, but, you know, so I, I mean, I don't really have an issue with this word, to be honest, you know, but this word, nah, uh, like that's like one of my callings is to go against this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, so if you're like, Hey man, you're not really reading it. You know, look, I, I could, if you want this book, I can send it to you. All right. But anyway, let's keep going. Love yourself better than anybody else. All beauty is in you and not outside of you. Aman made you beautiful. Confine your affection to your own race, and Amon will bless you, and men will honor you. You know, never be unkind to your race. Never curse your race. If anything is being done that is wrong by a member of your race, try to put him right. Don't condemn him without hearing him. Give him a chance to do what is right before you denounce him. If he provokes you, try to put up with his ignorance and persuade him to be kind, good, and gentle. So that's. This is uh this is actually something that I should I should learn for myself, but yeah you know don't be unkind to your race, um, never curse your race. This, this is this is actually really potent, and I mean it reminds me of the conflict resolution that I have in like other literature you know in the in the, in the pro black compendium, uh, but yeah conflict resolution is something that is really instrumental for our people. Now, I I don't perfectly agree with this obviously you know there are a Scotty in our race okay there are our Ascari and see this is one thing that I feel like Garvey should have let us know too which is you know the reality is this I mean I mean you have to see the complex he says don't condemn them without hearing them. so you can condemn them if you hear them you get what I'm saying give them a chance before you denounce them so it's not a matter of hey uh like like it's not a matter of never cursing your race it's it's really a matter of you give them a chance but again like you know go back to the last one where he says don't give people second chances you understand like like the reality is that you really like it's kind of you can almost say this is a contradiction you know if, if i were doing the lesson uh if i were doing the lesson i'd probably say where is the contradiction in chapter three regarding and lesson three regarding lesson two and that would actually, you know, you probably wouldn't have caught that. You know, I wouldn't have caught that shit if you asked me. But uh, anyway, uh, and so, sorry for cursing. I shouldn't curse. You know, uh, like I said, I, I want to play this for my son. So, you know, like you never know. Uh, let's say if I have to play it posthumously. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, boy. All right. All right. All right. Number three, to reclaim the fallen. Whenever a member of your race is down, pick him up. Whenever he wants genuine help and you can help him do so. 
Never leave him stranded and friendless. If you cannot help him yourself, send him to someone of the race who can help him. Put an arm of protection around him and keep him from going wrong and feeling absolutely friendless. You know, and again, like this, like I said, this is easier said than done. You know, I had this, this dude, you know, when I was out there recruiting, I went over, like there was this dude who was homeless, right? And I, 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 I extended the utmost friendship to him, right? Like, like you know, he wanted a, he wanted advice on getting girls, and I, I gave him advice. You know, <laughs> he wanted money, I gave him money. Uh, he wanted uh, like 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 he just wanted somebody to talk to. I gave somebody to talk to. But I'm not going front, you know. And you might you might say, oh, that's kind of a little petty. But I told the dude, like basically the dude at the time I didn't have my own phone for some reason, or I didn't use my own phone. I don't remember, but I think I used my ex wife's phone or something, or or I had my other friend text him or something like that. This dude kept these phone numbers of these other people, and I would tell him delete those other numbers, cause like after you break up with your your ex wife or whatever, you know, you don't want you don't want him calling her to get to you, you know what I mean? Especially if you have your own phone and you already gave him it was it was complicated. I mean, obviously it's not a real issue, but like sometimes you try to help people and they just. I mean, it's not a real issue. I probably shouldn't talk about it. All right, let's go to number four. To administer and assist the needy. Let it be your highest purpose in life to assist the needy members of your race. Use all your influence in your country, state, and town to help the needy elements of your race. Seek government help for them. So that's interesting. Seek philanthropic help for them. Uh, I said that wrong, but uh, philanthropic, you know. See, see Phil, means, uh, Phil means love. Anthropic means people, you know. But I'm just saying it wrong. Uh, anyway, seek help anywhere you can find it so that they may improve their condition. So, you know, this is why you need your own government. Because, see, this is also another contradiction. You know, use all your influence in your country to help the needy of your race, you know. But, like, you see right here, he says, if you cannot help him, send him to someone of that race who can help him. But if you're not in a black government, then you're sending him to the white government for help. And if the white government is helping, what it goes against this right here. You understand? Because it's, it's like you want to, for yourself, you want to get involved in a black government. Uh, because without without a black government, what, what what happens is you, like, you, you, your, 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 your efforts are going to be subverted by that very entity that you don't want to remove yourself from like even though the black like like at some point you got to realize that you're living your life and what you want to do with your life is 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 secure and build institutions for your posterity or for african people broadly right and the thing is that you can't do that with your life in another person's country you know I was actually discussing with uh, with someone uh, yesterday uh, about about just how large the population of people in America is. So America, I mean, I, let's see if I can I, maybe I'll discuss it another time. But but long long story short, you know, America has three hundred million white people, just about. You understand? Three hundred million white people is like one third of the population of Africa. You know, so it's a huge population of white people uh and and i mean the, the the relationship with that was more on the question of like what it means to engage in warfare against the people who are 300 million like in a population and like what are your odds of winning uh if you're not organized and and the, and the odds are slim you know for for any people let alone for people without weaponry. But, I mean, that's not really a related thing. It's just something that I wanted to bring up. You know, just juice up and, and get you get you thinking, you know, as we move forward in this lesson. All right, so let's say number five, to assist in civilizing the backward tribes of Africa. Now, I wouldn't put this word. I would put this word. I wouldn't put this word, right? But anyway, Africa, I mean, it's, it's really complicated. This is a complicated thing. This is why I wanted to do a lesson like, I had a lesson planned before. I wanted to do this lesson so that, you know, I can have an engagement with you and really work it out with you. But, you know, this is another way. So Africa is the motherland of all Negroes. 
all Negroes were taken from Africa against their will and forced into slavery. So obviously not all of us were taken from Africa, but yeah, all of us in uh, America or the diaspora were. Africa is a natural home of the race. One day, all Negroes hope to look to Africa as the land of their vine and fig tree. Therefore, it is necessary to help the tribes that live in Africa to advance to a higher state of civilization. The white man is not conscientiously doing it, although he professes to do so. This is only his method of deceiving the world. It is the Negro who must help the Negro to help the American Negro to the African. Sorry, you know, help the African Negro to achieve civilization is to prepare him for his place in a new African state that will be the home of all Negroes. So, civilization is an interesting word. The the the, the question becomes, what is civilization? Now, to Marcus Garvey, civilization was that Christian nonsense. Okay. And, and for that, you know, it's like, oh, no, I don't want to hear this, right? But civilization is moving towards my eye, okay? And in that sense, yes, you can say that Africa has groups of people who, who might have turned, like, a lot of pockets of Africa will have things that are against my eye, against balance, against reciprocity, you know? Like, you will have, like, child brides you know what i mean like you'll have child brides like in slavery or something like that or you will have like female gen genital mutilation like to the extreme and of course i feel like that's an arab uh introduction but like what i'm saying is that these things happen you know when you when you study the history of africa you realize that a lot of african groups are in fact like refugee groups, you know, refugee, quote unquote, refugee camps that became like, like, like that, 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 that became like uh, cities and, and villages and so forth, you know? So you would have people who fled from another part of Africa, uh, you know, joined with another group and, and the morals might have, you know, not been maintained entirely because, you know, you, you just have to imagine what it's like to, be displaced uh i mean like we see this in, in quote unquote america right where where africans are displaced from their continent and uh, from their communities abroad or they're, they're, they're sorry that they're, they're displaced from their communities and then the moral erosion takes place you know and this happened in africa many many times you know uh when 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 the great civilizations of the past fell there were groups of people who who migrated, you know, and 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 a lot of the people who were responsible for maintaining the culture may have died along the way, you know, or may have not made it, or may not have maintained or, or remembered everything to do with the, the culture. So, so I mean, there is this idea that you know you want to bring our people to a higher state of civilization, which I would say is ma'at, you know, uh, but there's there's you know whether it's backward or whether it's, you know, like, like, like what you mean by higher state, you know, could also be wrong. And, or let's say it should, could be propaganda, white propaganda. And I think, you know, the whole Christian, Christianizing Africans thing or Islamicizing Africans is that, that is part of that backward mentality that, that we do not want to repeat or, or do in, on our continent. But let's keep going. Let me see. Let me let me tell everybody what up. What up? <laughs> that's how that's how we talking. Uh, that's how we talking America. <laughs> All right. To assist in the development of independent Negro nations and communities, so the Negro should develop every section of the community in which he lives that is his, so that he may control that section or part of that community. He should segregate himself residentially in that community so as to have political power, economic power and social power in that community. So you want to say separate instead of segregate. Uh, segregation is not this. Segregation is when people forcibly, you know, separate you. Whereas separation is when you do this, when you residentially and, you know, you know, separate yourself for the political power. So that's, that's just one thing I want you to remember. Like when you're using these terms uh, in like your life, you know, when you're engaging other people, you don't say, oh, I think segregation is good. You know, you don't say that. That's You say separation. All right. If he scatters himself about the community, 
or if other people live in the community, he will be scattered his power and dividing he will be scattering his power and dividing it up with other people. If there are ten thousand Negroes in a town, they should live close to each other. If there are five hundred, one thousand, or one million in the town, they will have the power of their numbers to do business, to appeal to the governor, and to voice their rights as citizens. In this respect, segregation is good. To do otherwise is bad. So it would be separation, right? But the idea is that yeah, you know, you uh, like in modern parlance, like you don't say Negroes, you don't, you don't say your segregation. But especially if you're engaging with people who are not familiar with what you're saying, you know, saying segregation is just like, whoa, you know, <laughs> like, like, it's like saying Jim Crow. I wish you really Jim Crow. Uh, yeah, so 10,000 Negroes in a town, they should live close to each other. So that's what I'm saying. Like, like uh, this is what I want. I, I want, I want 10,000 of us. Uh, or a million of us, or even 500 or 1,000 of us, reading this book, reading the Book of Power, living together. You know what I mean? Like, living together, building institutions, schools, uh, so on and so forth, you know, for our people. You know, just, just, just doing right by us. And the thing is that this is what, this is how you would get, uh, this is this is close to how you would get power. Uh, I mean, you, you have to have people who are learned and, and doing positive works in their community. You can't have 10,000 people who are not doing positive works. You know, because this is what, this like, if you if you go to the pro-black compendium, you'll see an article about housing experiments. You know, you could have an apartment building with a thousand people who do not uh, have, have, have a, like, do not have a factory or do not have a means of, of, of economic well-being. And that's a disaster. Okay, that's a disaster. So, so you know, like, like you want to, you know, like I, like, like I would use the word oncobia here. I mean, I wouldn't obviously for this text, but what I'm saying is that you want ten thousand oncobia, and that would be like the highest consciousness uh, of a, of an African individual. You want that, and then you're definitely gonna have something good. You know, uh, s- separating with ten thousand. Well, now we use the word Negro to mean something. You know whatever but separating with 10,000 uh Ascari is 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 a disaster is a disaster like don't eat like 10,000 activists 10,000 astutes anything if it's not on Kobe, you're, you're you, if you're not doing work like you're just gonna have 10,000 people working for white folk and white folk are just gonna turn off the lights and then you're gonna say well you know you're gonna kill each other to survive you know what I mean uh and that's just the reality. So let's keep going. Number seven, to establish commissionaries or agencies in the principal countries and cities of the world for the representation and protection of all Negroes, irrespective of nationality. So this was, this is actually, wow. This is a wow. Like this, this you know, this is why I, I repeat, Marcus Garvey was the most intelligent person of the 20th century. And you know, it's upon us to really make it you know, make the 21st century more impressive than the last. But it's it'd be difficult because this is this is a wow. Okay, so I'm gonna just read it again because you you probably like what well, was wow to establish commissionaries or agencies in the principal countries and cities of the world for the representation and protection of all Negroes irrespective of nationality. And this is again this is the aims and objectives of the UNIA. So this means that there must be someone in every city whose business it will be to look after the interests of Negroes who may come into that city or country. His position will be like that of an ambassador, consul, or consular agent of a nation. He will interest himself in all the things affecting the Negro race and see to it that no advantage or abuse is taken or made of a Negro who comes into the city or country. He is to report all happenings affecting the Negro and those happenings in which the Negro is interested to the UNIA. This will not be necessary where Negroes have a community of their own, but is applicable only to foreign countries such as Europe, Asia, South, and South America, where the Negro may live in large numbers and have no contact with the government. So this is like, wow. You don't even like this is this is this is how pan Africanism could work, you know? Like so here's the thing. Like I wrote this uh question of the day on my Twitter. So if you're not following my Twitter, you know, feel free to do that. You know, it's at Onitase, right? O N I T A S E T, right? But I wrote a question of the day, uh today that goes along the lines of, you know, what if I went to a, a foreign like what if I went to Africa, right? 
uh, like an African country and I didn't have my money. You know, let's say they took my money or, I, you know, somebody took my money or let's just say I just don't have money. I'm throwing out the money and I, I go to starving and begging. And after I'm starving and begging, some family comes in and says, hey, you know, well, you know, they feed me for two days, three days. And then after the third day, they say, uh, oh, well, you can't you can't live here rent free pretty much. I mean, I mean, if if you work here, I mean, sorry, if you're here, you know, you got to work. You know, you gotta work for us, and and, we're, and we can only pay you like pennies, you know. And so the question is, well, is that slavery, right? And it's like, no, you, you, you know, you know. One of the answers, no, you're, you're. One of the responses I gave, I gave people options. It's like, no, that's that's you know, you can't just be a parasite. You know, the other ones like, yeah, it's slavery, but it's not chattel slavery. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah, it's slavery, but you know, I mean, you, you know, whatever. You don't have the money, whatever, right? The 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 the. The larger point, though, is this, that real talk, if I go to Af an African country and I'm all down on my luck, right? Real talk is that I could just go to the American embassy and be like, hey, I, I'm, I'm down on my luck in this country. And, and, and the people in the embassy, the American embassy, you know, because unfortunately, yeah, I'm a U.S. citizen. They might be like, oh, OK, uh, we got you. And, and that's something that is like real nation built like real things that nations do you know what i mean so america is looking at well, now let's say if i were a white guy it would be like yo motherfucker here's a hotel oh sorry i don't mean to curse oh shit <laughs> well yeah it's like yo dude here's a hotel right uh but but the thing is although you know calling a white boy a mother is not that bad right <laughs> uh anyway but look uh although that actually doesn't sound right but anyway but what i'm saying is this that uh you know, you like like that's that's the reality that you know you you set up embassies in other countries to look out for your people. That's that's something that we're not even remotely doing. You know, because even today we're like, hey, was Nigeria looking out for us? No, like like you can't go to the Nigerian embassy and complain about the American government. You understand? You're supposed to be able to do that. Uh, you're supposed you're supposed to be able to do that, but you can't. I mean, you could if you were a Nigerian, uh, uh, like of Nigerian descent or a Nigerian diaspora. You could do that, but but this is what is meant by the UNIA and a Pan African nationalist mentality, like the idea that you would set up embassies all over the world so that people can 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 have some somebody who can speak to their government. You know what I mean? Because because the ambassador or the embassy can speak to the government you get what i'm saying like like the amb ambassador and the, and the and the embassy do speak to the government so it's like yo like oh my gosh <sighs> like this is why i say you know like you got to study garvey and and like like i said you know i give you the like there's like four there's like five fundamental texts for Garvey, okay? Or there are a couple of them. I give maybe like three of them, I'd say. But one of them, like I said, is my book. You know, one of my, my book, you're going to get this kind of deep insight for Garvey. But outside of my book, you know, obviously you read Garvey's books or Tony Martin's books, and, and you get this. And it's like, this is the kind of stuff that you, you might not pick up on. This is why this is why I have books with commentary. Or even this is why I have the, the message. This is why I'm even doing the commentary. Because a lot of the things you might just read over. This is deep. This is deep. You know, and I, and I want you to gain an appreciation of that. And and like I said, you know, I have literature. And I, and I want you to read this other literature. And if I didn't want you to read this other literature, why would I read it to you? Like, come on. <laughs> All right, so let's go. To promote a conscientious spiritual worship among the native tribes of Africa. So, so this is what I'm saying right here. This is like it's like that Christianity nonsense. All right. Considering that there are so many different religious thoughts, the Negro should be brought under the influence of one system of religion and the belief in Ahmad. Okay? Like like when I say it that way it sounds good. An honest effort should be made to instruct him in his particular desires and not to exploit him by teaching him different religions. There is to be no speculative idea behind his religion. So I mean in in Actually, in the in the free preview of the Book of Power, you're gonna you're gonna find this essay called "The Law of Ma'at," and that right there is like top five essays, okay? Um, and but in that essay is uh, is 
is is is is me articulating that you know the reality is that yes africa did have in fact uh, a non-speculative spirituality around amon you know the spirituality of african people was if you for, for lack of a better word it was centered around uh science okay it was centered around science and scientific thinking and scientific observations so so you know just re returning to the ancient african spirituality will be this garvey promoting you know the christianity stuff that's not cool i mean it's not it's not it's not what we want you know it's it, and like i don't want you to read garvey and then come out like oh yeah well christianity is pretty good you know, garvey nah don't do that please please don't do that uh, like I said, you know, engage the literature that I got because I want I want the best for our race. And 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 there's a lot of ideas out there, uh, a lot of ideas out there. But this whole, you know, let's do spirituality. Let's do African spirituality. That's that's the idea that, you know, we should be about. So let's go to number nine. And look at this. This is oh, my gosh. Oh, Garvey's so good, yo. All right, so nine, to establish universities, colleges, academies, and schools for the racial education and culture of the people. This right here is a fundamental step. This is what, this is partly what I have in my book, you know, Boko Waset Na Kiru, you know. This is a fundamental step. And the fact that he's saying this 100 years ago, and the thing is this, when, when you talk about Garvey, you have to realize that a lot of people after him aren't talking about it. So I might talk about it, and you might be like, oh, well, you're just saying what Garvey said. Yeah, I am, because Garvey was right. And I'm not, I try to go even above and beyond, obviously. But the thing is that a lot of people after Garvey do not go above and beyond. You know, and then we still like read them up and just be like, oh my gosh, this is so good. You know, it's not good. You have to establish universities, colleges, academies, and schools for the racial education. And he did this. Even Carlos A. Cooks did this. You understand? Uh, a lot of other people have it. And, and this is why I can't, you know, I don't stand by those other people, pretty much. Uh, but let's go. This means that we are not to be satisfied with the educational system, the white man, which has been devised for him, for his own purpose, to lead others to be obedient to, to obedience to his system. The Negro must have an educational system of his own, based upon the history and tradition of his race. Therefore, the textbook must be different than the white man's textbooks. The white man's books laud him and outrage the Negro. In such textbooks, the Negro should substitute all that is bad affecting him for what is good relating to him. Therefore, the Negro should not be satisfied with the college or university education from white schools. He should add to his schooling by going to his own schools and universities where possible, or read such textbooks that have been adopted by his schools and colleges. These books should glorify the Negro, just as the white man's system glorifies the white man. Again, like I said, you know, like this is what I mean. You know, this is this is why I write my books. You know, my books are in line with Garvey's. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like if if Garvey were alive, he'd be like, "Yo, read read this Oni Tase stuff." You know, like like he did with uh, I think J. A. Rogers. He was like, "Yo, read this J. A. Rogers." You know, you 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 like like I'm not even gonna like I obviously I'm just belaboring. I'm just beating a dead horse. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, this is, this is, cause see what I say is that a lot of people after Garvey do not emphasize an educational system. Educational system is the fundamental instrument for a people's liberation, namely our people. You know, we cannot, if we are all going to this white boy, reading the white man's textbooks and complaining about it, even though it was devised by him for his own purpose, if we just keep going to his schools and, and and doing what he does instead of doing this, right? We're never going to advance above him. Never. You know, so so when I release a book and I'm like, yo, this is like I'm going to break down to you, not just this educational stuff, but also give you insight into African spirituality. Also give you it like if I'm doing that. Then you 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 should you should be running over yourself. You should be running over each other to get that book. You should be running over each other. You know, and obviously, you know, the ad's gonna be soon, so you know, get ready to get popping. Oh, I thought it was just ten, but I guess it's eleven. All right, to conduct a worldwide commercial and industrial intercourse for the good of the people. So the economic life of the Negro is important. He lives by eating, wearing clothes, and living in a home. These are essential. 
To get these things, he must work either with his hands or his brains. The economic system lays down the fact that the commerce and industry are the feeding factors in the economic life. Hence, it is absolutely necessary that the Negro builds an economic structure sufficiently strong enough to feed the arteries of his existence. Therefore, the Negro should indulge in every kind of business that is necessary to earn profit, because it is by profit that he will be able to obtain life's necessities for himself and for his race. Um, and his race. All right, so... Like, this is Garvey talking about commercial. Like, like this is... You want to advance from Garvey. Okay? Like I said, the, you want to advance from Garvey. You're not going to get that advancement from Garvey most places you look. You know, I, I'm giving you one option. But even if you don't want to advance from Garvey, you got to at least meet Garvey where he is. This is very, very potent. And, and this is what you have to understand about the Garvey movement. Garvey, by organizing, by way of organization, was able to engage with the most intelligent people of his time. And he learned from it. You know, that's that's what that's what life is about. You know, you engage with the most intelligent people and things that you can and you learn from that. You understand? Uh like like I can't even I can't even like this is Again, I mean, I know this one right here, you might be like, oh, well, this is common sense. Yeah, it's common sense, but are you doing it? Are you working toward it? You understand? Are your people working toward this? Because if they're not, then, you know, common sense or not, it's, uh, sorry, let me sign up that phone. Common sense or not, you know, it's, it's time to get to work. And, you know, I don't want to, like I said, like, come on. All right, at number 11. Uh, this is the last of the aims, and then he's going to go on to it. To work for better conditions in all Negro communities. You know, there should be a ceaseless effort among Negroes everywhere to improve their condition in every department of life and make their communities so prosperous as to compel the respect of their neighbor. No stone should be left unturned to advance from one stage of development and progress to another. There's always work to do in this respect. And so, you know, here's what I tell people, you know, obviously I'm going to transition to the thing. Uh, here's what I tell people. I say, look, if you want to do something for our race, right? My advice, what I want, what I'm doing is I'm putting my books in people's hands, okay? And if that's if you want to do something for the race and you don't know what to do, at least get the book in your hand and put the books in other people's hands. So I'm gonna let you know about the book, and yes, I'm going to spit it, cause why not? All right. <laughs> Okay, so I know books, all right? So let me tell you about a book. <laughs> all right, check it. So the goal and objective is to be selective, elective for knowledge with the black directive, checking sources, heritage, and legacies with the brilliance to defeat our nemesis, a book of power, so aptly named, esteemed and famed for informing the brain and doing the same as the ancestors before us. Saying cope with afterlife chorus, wisdom is the key against dangers, and the kings and leaders will lead the changes. We are due in Africa with no strangers. Do you hear us? Okay, hold on, we can't continue to read the second fiddle. African power is the end. Of the middle, to build a nation the likes we never existed. The motto here too far, we persisted. Better, we resisted. Best, we building. We'll raise the roof and break through the ceiling. Killing away the chains we were given to stop just surviving, start thriving and living. Africa's about to host superpowers. China and US back up the time powers. No one can be free without freeing themselves. But freedom is shown and owned on bookshelves. The book of power, a key for liberation. There's no domination. Where does education because ignorance is man's main weakness? All of the we don't teach this. Then the pages of sages came to quick. I compile them. Delay, Desolin, Nere, Garvey, and Zinga, and Cooks. 500 pages to pass the most books. The task is told to bring up the confidence. You will hold the tone for the confidence. Have some pride and push forward your test. Your leaders are reading one of the best. The book has science, covers violence, self reliance, and does away with silence. The time has come for the work to get done and build up a land that was second to none. We'll organize, acknowledge, and strategize. Africa before our eyes and blackness will be the complexion we see. Anytime we envision what it means to be free. So come join minds, read what is written. Here be solutions, no longer hidden. Nothing works in theory, all that works, works and works. So it's time to put ourselves first. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Changes. Book of power. 
So the book of power can be purchased on Amazon. Just click on the link below. Alright? Send me out on tap. To lend my eye, to shine is fat. To lend my eye, to shine is fat. To lend my eye, to shine is fat. Oh, tap. Alright, thank you so much, family. I didn't even notice that people were in the chat, so thanks for uh, coming through. Uh, let me say it's a poly, uh, Wanda, and Antoine, and Antoine Donalds. Alright, so uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, and yeah, I agree. African centered schools are the way to decolonize. You know, we have to realize how fundamental, like, we don't seem to notice how fundamental schools are. And and it's like it's like you cannot you cannot you cannot advance above another people without schools you know what i mean like it's just it's just so on like it's it's just just take it out of your mind take it out of your mind because that is the most bizarre route toward advancement you know like 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 you like you go to military school you know this brother was actually telling i was watching a what was I watching? I was watching uh, Omawale Africa's uh, conversation or like his dialogue. He had a panel, I think it was two days ago. I, I, you know, he had a panel two days ago and he was saying, look, Israel, like if you're a Jew, if you're a Euro Jew, European Jew, right? You can travel to Israel uh, when you reach adult age and get a uh, military education. Like, get self-defense training, uh, regardless of whether you claim to be a citizen or not. You know, you can get military training. And, and that, that right there is just the preparation. They're not expecting you to not have training, to not have education, and then defend their country. You know, they're expecting you, they're, they're, not, they're, they're giving you a free education to... Uh, to, 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 to defend their country because they understand that education is key. Uh, education is key in, in every circumstance. So let's just, let's just keep reading though. All right, so all the funds of the UNIA are supposed to be directed in these channels. The funds of the UNIA must be used for the race and only the race. These funds belong to no one individual or group of individuals. They are held in trust for the race. All the profits made from investments in different companies that it controls must ultimately use for the good and welfare of the Negro race at large. So I think this is actually a pretty interesting conversation. So at one point I'm on Twitter and somebody says, hey, you know, I don't like Garvey because of, of, uh, basically there's this woman who was killed. I can't remember her name right now, but she was killed. I think it was Laura Kofi or something like that. Or Laura, Laura Coffee. Uh, she was killed. She was like a UNIA rising star. And then somebody killed her and they're kind of trying to blame Garvey for it but one of the things that she was doing uh, as, as well known she was doing was misappropriating UNIA funds now obviously you don't kill like I don't think you should kill a black person for that and obviously and real talk be honest with you I don't think Garvey was involved uh, you know the, like like he was exonerated obviously and if he were involved you already know that's like a huge crime to like murder somebody uh, you know, this is a huge guy to murder somebody, and he's like enemy of the state number one. You know, so I, I it's it's just doubtful that he was actually involved. But the person was going against Garvey about that, and uh, and I mean, it, obviously, you, you, when you read uh, Race First by Tony Martin, he'll mention it. He'll look into the papers, and he'll he'll give you his insight and his uh, thing on it, his view on it. But you know, it is like. I wouldn't say, I mean, it's a, it's a terrible thing. You know, I don't think it really has anything to do with Garvey per se. I don't really think it has anything to do with the UNIA per se. You know, it's a huge organization. There were people who, uh, you know, took that into their hand. But, but as far as misappropriating funds and understanding that the funds are not, you know, like individual or group or, you know, like it's, it's a really complicated issue. But I thought that I should bring that up. Uh, I mean, I really shouldn't have, to be honest. But... I thought that it's, uh, I think it's something that, you know, you might be interested in, you know, as an individual, you know, curious about the, the past and, and what happens in the past or what happens in the future, you know, what happens in the present, you know, the reality of 
our situation is that you're going to have these complicated like you're going to have a Scotty one way or the other you know the Ascari here might well be the the person who would shoot a woman you know uh who would kill a woman over uh something but you know that like that's the reality of this world you know the world is not simply oh there's a there's somebody there's somebody else in the organization she's a rising star and she's misappropriating funds you know and and you know we're just going to you know, we're just not going to do anything about it. You know, there, there's a there's a reality in this world, and and, and we have to we have to realize that it's sad because I personally I don't think a woman, like you should you should kill a woman, but uh, but that's that's like the like the world is the world is not entirely pretty. You know what I mean? The the world is not entirely unblemished. It's it's real and it's it's gritty and and you know I want you to know this stuff. You know that there's there's reality. Like reality is is reality. You know. Well, let's keep going. You and I, a property will be held in trust for the Negro race. Its wealth will be held in trust for the Negro race for ser- serving generations yet unborn. You know. So you know, I like how he highlights the importance of the unborn. You know. Uh, you know, back to the Laura thing though. Yeah. You know, I, I hear that she might have just used the funds for. Well, I don't know. It's really difficult. It's really difficult to say. Some people say she she did get you know certain things in Africa. Some people will say that you know she kind of just has the money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and and that's another thing too. Like when it comes to money, like when when people lose money, like it's a serious thing for them. You know, I heard of uh, like a family who gave a thousand dollars a piece. You know, like each of them, like each member of the family gave a thousand dollars to Umar Johnson School, and you know they're not. They're not glad about it. And I mean, that's just a thousand dollars. And although that's a lot of money, you know, for a family to like give a piece, but it's, it's, it's like, you know, when it comes to money, like it's, it's not something you're supposed to play with. Like, like if it's not your money, don't, don't really mess with it, you know? Uh, and I'm not saying that, you know, to justify any sort of thing, you know, it's kind of a little awkward, but I, I want you to, I want you to, I want you to understand like the nuances of that and i mean if you want to learn it further obviously just read race first read the read the documents around it but there's going to be a lot of propaganda out there and i and I'm, i just want to preface and prepare you for that but let's keep going the unia shall go on eternally with one generation handing it down to the next no one person or person persons can claim such wealth because it is for the race in perpetual existence stress this everywhere you go so that people may know that what they contribute to the UNIA is not lost to them. Let them know that their future generations may benefit from the gifts they give today. So he's, this, is, this is about how you would get people to you know, donate to the UNIA. So black nationalism, or invest in the UNIA, let's say it that way. Black nationalism, the culmination of all the efforts of the UNIA must end in Negro independent nationalism on the continent of Africa. That is to say, everything must contribute toward the final objective of having a powerful nation for the Negro race. Negro nationalism is necessary. It is political power and control. Uh, so black nationalism, Negro nationalism, African nationalism. Basically, the, the objective is a, a nation with a powerful nation. You know, and th- this is something that he said before Africa had powerful nations. And not to say that Africa has powerful nations today, but, but he was saying this before Africa even had independent nations. So, so it's, it's, it's worth, you know, contextualizing that. Let's keep going. No race is free until it has a strong nation of its own. No race is free until it has a strong nation of its own, its own system of government, and its own order of society. Never give up this idea. Let no one persuade you against it. It is the only protection for your generation and your race. Hold on to the idea of an independent government and nation as long as other men have them. Never be satisfied to always live under the government of other people because you will always be at their mercy. Visualize for yourself and your children and generations unborn, your uh, unborn, your own king, emperor, president, your own government officials and administrators who look like you. Amun never in- could have intended to make you look as you look and as you are and make your king, president, emperor, or ruler of a different race than you are. This must not be a license for you to disobey the laws. And that's something that you might not understand right here. Right? 
this is something that is a little bit like what what's he talking about this must not be a license for you to disobey the laws of kings or other races or rulers of other races while you live under their control okay so if you're under the control of other people he's saying don't actually disobey them uh you must always seek and work for a government absolutely your own where you and your children will have a chance like anybody else in the state to have a chance to rise from the lowest to the highest position which you may not attain under your other governments while you are under alien governments get the best out of them as the rights of citizenship but always have in view doing something to make it possible for your race to have a nation and a government of its own speak of this dream of this work unceasingly for this and never forget this for this is the great task of the unia so like i said before like you guys were like wait what like some people might have been somebody might have said wait you're gonna go to the american embassy if you're in trouble in africa what's wrong with you but it's like uh uh yeah <laughs> like, like i mean i figure pay taxes you know what i'm saying like i pay taxes so why the fuck would i not go to the people that i'm paying like you know what i'm saying uh no i mean like i don't know if i would per se i don't really I honestly know but i mean if things were so desperate that i was begging on the street i probably would be like well i do have this passport <laughs> i mean unless i don't have the passport then you know i mean i could still i don't know who knows all right never can do con confuse your ideas about negro nationality with that of other people so as to think that their nationality is good enough for you. So never, never think you're an American. <laughs> like never think that you're an American. Or, or think that that's good enough. You know, me going to Africa and be like, like if I go to, like if I'm, if I'm in a, you know, whatever, name an African country, right? If I'm in Senegal, right? And in Senegal, the, uh, like I would want Senegalese national citizenship. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I would want Senegalese citizenship. Uh, like and if it means renouncing my American citizenship, sure. But if I don't have Senegalese citizenship, then no, I'm not gonna be like, oh, I'm not a freaking American. Like I'm gonna be like, oh, hold on a second. Uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, yeah, you know, because uh, you know, you know, if they, if they put me up against a firing squad, I'll be like, hey, wait a second, hold up, here's the passport. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, uh, pretend like I'm an important person in America. Be like, oh, wait, wait, you know. Uh, Actually, if you do this, that's a that's an international crime. <laughs> you know, whatever saves my life. You know what I mean? It keeps me breathing. All right, let's keep going. Never think that if Japan gains control of the world, they will treat you better than the Anglo-Saxons or Latins. Don't think if the Chinese or Indians get control of the world, your position will be better. All of the races and nations will use you just the same as slaves and underdogs. So this is that you have to understand, like here, like. Like, right now, we're talking about China, and it's gaining influence, and, you know, hey, it's, it's rolling the spread of the coronavirus, right? <laughs> but we're talking about China and all that. Uh, you know, uh, he was saying Japan, because Japan was, like, a rising power at the time, or was a, a, a good-looking power at the time, you know, before they were bombed, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, China and India. Like, you're not going to fare better under these people and he's already telling you this like a hundred years ago before the yellow threat was even like that serious but let's keep going therefore your only protection is to have your own government don't encourage negroes to join japanese chinese indian or any other movement with the hope of getting greater freedom they will never get it because all people want all things for themselves explain this thoroughly and sufficiently so as to discourage ignorant negroes from thinking otherwise you should teach negroes to have pride in their own nationality and teach them not to try to wear garments that typify membership in other nationalities it is ridiculous and people laugh at them for doing so look i look there's this thing there's a store called panda express it's like some fake chinese food store whatever yo tell me why this dude this brother on the bus trying to eat that junk with chopsticks You know, but I mean, like, I know people who do that. Like, you want to eat Asian food and you like eating with chopsticks? Like, my dude. I'm not saying forks is better. I'm not saying go freaking eat that shit. Like, eat that. Sorry. Let me try go eat that with your hands. But, like, come on. Like, nah. Just just use what you know at that point. You know what I mean? Like, like if, like, for instance, I know English. So, I'm going to use English. I'm not going to. But if I'm, like, sorry, speaking long, you know. I shouldn't do that. But I started speaking Chinese for some damn, like, some reason. Like, oh, this is better. Like, nah. You know, like, English is already bad enough. But you go on the whole Chinese route when you don't got to, nah. That's, that's like, 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 come on. You already know. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Yo, actually, I, I want to know if people in Africa, like, like, y'all ever see somebody eating chopsticks? <laughs> like, a black person eating with chopsticks? Like, come on. 
It don't make no sense, man. I mean, like, I'm not going to say. Look, I one time got this uh, Fufu. I don't know if you guys know about Fufu, but I don't know if anybody know about Fufu, I should say. But they, it's like a hot, like, it's like, I don't even know what it is, to be honest. I can't remember. It's, it, they explained it to me like a million times. But it's like a doughy kind of food in like a, a soup, like a pepper soup or whatever. And like the way how you're supposed to eat it. Like I think this was like one of my first, well, I shouldn't say first, but like one of my early dates. <laughs> you know, this is this, this brought me to a, a store where, you know, you got to go wash your hands and then you eat the food with your hands. But they, they give you a fork and a spoon on the side. And yeah, you know, I'm not going to front. I think I use my fork and spoon. Because I'm like, I got, I'm not going to put my hands in hot ass soup. Like, this is like hot ass soup. Oh, I got to stop cursing. I don't know why I started cursing. But this is like hot soup. Right? And I'm going to put my hand in like boiling soup. You know? No, I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, I mean, maybe like, you know, like, y'all got some thick skin. I don't know. If y'all see my hand, it's like, I got I got soft hands. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, a, I'm an intellectual. You know what I mean? Like, like if the white boy, if the white boy hire me, it's to do some brain work. You know, he don't hire me for no hard labor. You know what I mean? Uh, so, so like I got soft hands. That thing, that thing burned me. You know what I mean? <laughs> that thing burns me. I'm sorry. Uh, so no, uh, you know. And I'm gonna tell you, like real talk. One time I was, uh, I was helping out. You know, like somebody close a barrel. You know, cause, cause that's what you do when you. Uh, like, like, like they're like a Caribbean type, so they send food and all that stuff to like the Caribbean, and, and they had to close the brow. So I was helping them close the brow, and I accidentally touched their hand, and they was like, "That soft hand? No, get out of here! You can't help me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't help me. It's like, look, look, you know, like I can't help it if you know I do like I do intellectual labor. You know what I mean? Like I, I write books. I don't, uh, I don't like, you know, I don't put up walls or something. You know what I'm saying? I take them down. No, I'm joking. All right, let me stop. All right. <laughs> it's ridiculous, whatever. Teach Negroes to look for honor in their own race and from their own nation and to serve their own race and nation to get such honors. Any honors they can get from any other race for serving that race, they can get from their own for serving their race. Therefore, don't waste time in that. You can have your own king, emperor, pope, duke, your own everything. Therefore, don't bow down to other races for recognition. When you have honored your own men and women, recognize that honor before the whole world to let the world know that you honored your own. If the world laughs at those you have honored, ask them if they want you to laugh at those they honored. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. If they laugh, laugh at them. A white king has no more right to drive in a golden coach than your king and sovereign. Their pope has no more right to put on sacred robes than your pope. Their dukes and nobles have no more right to be dressed up in feathers than your dukes or nobles. Therefore, have pride in yourself and honor yourself. So this right here is a little bit on the white imitation side. I think you you picked up on that. This is a little bit on the white imitation side. Uh, you don't need to have dukes and nobles and kings. You know, you don't have to have all that. But but at the same time, it's like um, like and you know you see that you know like you see that in Africa right now where where like you see the white judge and he's like you know you might be like you know you see they see you see the black judge and he has like a white wig on and you're and you know you might be like well their judge has no more right to have a white wig than your judge like no actually hold on a second you know what I'm saying <laughs> like that all out one you know uh you 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 don't want to get into white imitation white emulation and that's actually one of the issues that you can come across with Garvey. That there's a lot of white imitation, white emulation. And you might be like, hey, Oni, you just said something about eating fufu with a knife and fork. One, is hot soup. Two, it's 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 a little different. And I mean, I'm saying that if I were in Africa, sure. You know what I mean? But like, if I'm in America and like, I can't stand the heat. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna, like, 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 like I'm not gonna play myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 it's like if you laugh, they laugh at them. Like, they, they're in the back. Like, <laughs> like they're in the store in the back laughing. They like they laughing their asses off. And now here's another thing too. Like that, that soup is pepper, like pepper, like bun up pepper. And and what I found out later was that it was it actually wasn't a good restaurant. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't. Like I told I told somebody from Ghana, like oh I went to this restaurant and they were like, you went there? Shh. You know, <laughs> like, you, you know, like it wasn't a good restaurant. So it's not even like. Like I'm, like I'm be honest with you too. Like when they serve us the meat, 
Because, you know, you're trying your best to be, you know, they served us a piece of meat with hair on it. Like, it still had hair on it. I don't know if that's normal for you guys. That ain't normal for me. You know what I mean? And I mean, yeah, you might be like, well, only you're just, nah. Like, like there's a point. Like, I, I, if I'm looking back on it, looking back on it, I think there was just, because here's another thing, too. I have this, when I was in, a, it was like another city I was I was uh, staying at for a moment. And, and uh, the sister was telling me that they had this thing, like it was a Jamaican store. But they have a pasta that's really, really, really spicy. And the sister was telling me that only people that order it, really. I mean, I ordered it, too. But she was like, it's really only there for white folk to order and, and get bun up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's only there for white people to order and get burned. Like, that's the only... Like, the sister told me that. So, it's like sometimes when you go to a restaurant, people do play you. People do, you know, like, they do they do you dirty. You know, so if I say, "Oh, let me get the let me get the spicy food," like 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 you know they they, they like that's what they like the sister you know, the sister from Jamaica she did it to a white boy. I'm guessing that they, like and then here's the thing too. It's like because 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 it's like a recipe. You know what I'm saying? Like like it could be that that was the recipe that white folk order, and I just ordered it, and they were like, "Ah, uh, well, let's, let's laugh anyway." I mean, like we can't we can't not give a black person the same thing that we give a white person. It's just Black person should know better than to order it, you know. Although I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure because I also know there was, there was a brother in there just eating that junk up, and we were just looking at him like, "Is this motherfucker crazy?" <laughs> like, like, like so I don't know, but I mean, it wasn't actually a good restaurant, so don't, 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 don't try that, you know. Uh, am I from Reddit? Hold on a second. So James says, "Am I from Reddit?" I'm on Reddit. Let me just tell him. I think it's a. Uh, What's my Reddit name? I think Oni ABS. All right, Oni ABS. Uh, I'm the moderator of Just Pro. I'm one of the moderators of Plus Pro Black. Just Pro Black things. Although the, the Reddit site is it's dying a little bit, but yeah, I'm I'm there. How you doing, James? You, you on Reddit? Uh, let me actually ask. All right, I, mean, I, I, I kind of figured that out, but, you know. All right, let's keep going. Don't allow the other nations to get ahead of you in anything. Follow the idea of the Japanese. Every ship the other races build, the Japanese build one. Every university the other races build for teaching men, the Japanese build one. Do the same. Always have your own because they will not be enough to accommodate you later on. Create your own. You know, and this is, this is, this is another really important thing. Now... Like, it, 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 this is not the white imitation, white emulation thing. I mean, it is, but it isn't. You know, the reality is that you have to understand what other people are doing to get ahead. Other people are building universities. Okay? Other people are building ships. If you are not doing that, you're not going to be ahead of them. You're going to be behind them. And, and, he, and he tells you, look, if you don't have your own, eventually there's not going to be enough to accommodate you. It's like it's like the ventilators with this COVID nineteen thing. There's not enough ventilators, and now ventilators are not. I, I'm reading now that they're not even proven, you know, to be effective. But they're not enough for you if they're running low. So you have to have your own, or you're going to die. And that's the case. You know, it's unfortunate, but a lot of our people are dying. Uh, because of the reality that we don't have our own, and and th like there are consequences for every joy. There's a price to be paid. There's a there's a large price for having universities. There's a large price for having ships, you know, and and so you know there's a joy of not paying these prices, but there's a cost of not having your own ships. There's a cost of not having your own universities. There's a cost for not having your own ventilators. You understand? There's a cost to every. Everything has a cost. So you have to say to yourself, what am I willing to do? What am I willing to do? Uh, uh, all right. Peace, brother. Peace, James. Yeah. All right. So uh, he used to be active on Reddit. That's nice. I'll tell you, I used to be the moderator. All right. I mean, I'm still the moderator, technically. All right, let's get going. Every Japanese you see is working for the good of his nation. Every white man you see is working for the good of his nation. Teach every black man to work for the good of his nation. In conversation with him, never leave him until you have persuaded him to this line of thought. 
Go to all your lawyers, doctors, and ministers and talk this into them. Argue with them until they perspire confession. Go back again and again and talk until you get your man and let him work for a nation. Always talk about a nation. Always feel that you see the nation. Use the object lessons of other nations to convince your people of the reality of a nation. The sovereign of a people is in the nation. This is true. This is like, this is something we don't understand. The nation is the most powerful entity in the world. The nation is the most powerful entity in the world. And don't let anybody tell you. Some people are going to tell you, no, it's the corporation. No, it's not the corporation. It's the nation. It's the most powerful nation in the world. The governments of the world are the most powerful entities in the world. It's the, it's the governments that go to war. You understand? And warfare is the way to change the world. It's, it's one of the main instruments for changing the world. So so you have to you have to understand that this is your objective. Nationhood. Nations. Nations. And this is why I go back to Garfi. Some of you are like, why don't you go to these other people? No, I don't go to these other people because it's Garvey who talks about nationhood. Alright, I gotta hurry up because uh it sounds like the boy is starting. <laughs> All right. It is the result of a people forming a society of their own to govern themselves and to achieve their ends. People with different outlooks and of different races never join together except they are subdued. They always find independent expression and action. The highest expression of this independence is the sovereignty of a nation. You know, the highest expression of the independence is the sovereignty of a nation. Uh, let me see. Okay, I don't have that much. So I might just tell this boy good morning and all that, but that's about it. Uh, the flag of a nation is the emblem that signifies the existence of the nation. Have your flag. It is red, black, and green. Be proud of it, for it is the emblem of your race. When other nations exhibit theirs, exhibit yours. That means don't exhibit the American flag. Don't even exhibit the Jamaican flag. Well, I mean, you could. See, the thing is this. When he was writing this, right, Jamaica was not independent. Jamaica was a colony. Okay, so technically, when 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 Garvey navigated the world, he navigated the world as a a, a, a colonial. I can't remember the word, but but he he navigated the world as a as a like a citizen. Well, not a citizen per se, but like a, a colonial subject of of, a, of of England. You understand? Uh, and and so like like now that the like Jamaica gained independence like in the nineteen sixty or something like that. You understand? But before that, it was a colonial subject of 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 England. So so when he was when he was doing this, like like he was technically a colonial subject. So so when so so the thing is that like a lot, like for instance, I have, like a lot of the flags in Africa were not flags. Something. So it's like when you, because some people would say the comparison. But what about? And why, why can't AWS show their flag? Why can't they show the American flag when Jamaicans show their flag? And when Nigerians, you know, they say that, but it's like. Because the American flag is the white man's flag. You know, the white man... Like, one of the reasons why Garvey even did the uh, UNIA, I mean, the red, black, and green, was there was this song by this white boy that said that everybody has a flag except the coon. You know what I mean? Like, the Russian has a flag, the thing has a flag. You know? And and so so the, the idea is... Uh, the idea behind that is... Yeah, the, the American flag is not your flag. And and one of the reasons to get the red, black, and green is because the black people do not have a flag. Like, did not have a flag up until up until the red, black, and green, in a sense. I mean, there was obviously Nigeria, Liberia, and so on and so forth. But, and Liberia is a copy of America. But it was like they did not have a flag in the sense of all of us. You know, and that's what the RBG is. But yeah, if you show Jamaica and you show all that other stuff... Like it's not the same as showing the American flag. It's, it's not good. It's not. It's. I mean, it's not. It's not. I would prefer the red, black, and green. But I completely understand that if you have a nation, you have a nation. You understand? Uh, if you have a nation, you have a nation. And again, he 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 did this before there were nations. So make songs about your nation, and sing them. Uh, write poetry about your nation and read it. Recite it. Glorify your nation in music and songs. Don't sing the songs of other races. Don't recite the inspirational poems of other races. Sing and recite your own. Now, this is where it's a little ironic because, you know, in the first one, he uh, he read, uh, 
you know, in chapter one. So this is like another one of those contradictions, to be honest. But in lesson one, he he read Invictus, and I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure Invictus is not a black author. I mean, I'd have to look it up, but I don't I don't think it is. So it's like, why would you say that and then do that? But anyway, sing and recite your own. Everything that inspires other races, turn into your own tune and fit it to suit your own inspiration and idealism. See only yourself in everything. Make your nation the highest expression of human idealism. Then live up to it. So anyway, thank you so much. Uh, next chapter is obvious. Next lesson is le- elocution, obviously. But thanks so much for listening. Uh, I just heard my boy uh, waking up. Uh, so I'm going to you know, close out. But peace and love. Like I said, you know, if you want to like support or if you want to read something separately, you know, you have you have several options. But one of them is, oh, obviously do the like, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, Do the uh, notification bell, do all that. But there's also, you know, I have the books. I want you to get the Book of Power mostly because that one's like, like all of them are great. Honestly, I read them again and I was like, woo, this is good stuff. But <laughs> woo! I, I, anyway, but uh, like uh, oh, thanks everybody, thank you. Uh, but you know, get the book of power, obviously. But otherwise, you know, join the Discord, and and I'm gonna make a special channel for people who got the books. So so, or people who read the books, finished the books. But but join the join the book of power and get the book of power, and and let's uh let's meet again, let's talk again in the future. But thank you so much for listening, and I hope to hear from you and see you next time. And and thanks again. All right. Shemi Amotep.